Every snowshoe frame comes from a single piece of hard wood, usually white ash. The craftsmen start with a two meter strip about 20 millimeters thick. Using a planer, they thin the middle down to about 12 millimeters. Then it's onto a table saw where they taper each end to a fine point. They take the trimmed pieces, known as bows, and hammer steel braces onto each one. These support the wood where it's thinnest, so it won't break later on during the bending process. They put the bows in a steam chamber to soften the wood. Thirty minutes later, they're damp enough to bend without breaking. They start working from the middle, the area called the faux, where the wood is thinnest and easiest to bend. They wrap it around a steel form on a bending jig. Then lay one tapered end over the other and tack them together. Now back to the steamer for a second bow to complete the pair. A temporary crossbar over the width of the frame holds the shape. They use different steel forms to shape different snowshoe models. They set the frame on a bending machine called a press brake. Then position a wooden bar on the frame to act as a fulcrum. As the press comes down, it curves the tip of the frame about 7 centimeters upward. They insert a crossbar lengthwise to hold the bend in place. The frames are still damp from the steam chamber, so they need to dry out for several days. Only then can the temporary crossbars safely come out. The craftsmen then sand the wood to a smooth finish. They drill slots on the inside for the two permanent crossbars. While another machine stamps those bars with the company logo. It takes just a quick stretch to insert the bars. One near the toe, the other near the heel. Now the frames go for a dip in a vat of oil-based varnish to seal and waterproof the wood. Once the varnish dries, the frames are ready for lacing. In keeping with tradition, the laces are animal hide. Wetting it makes it easier to cut into long, thin strips. A skilled weaver threads her needle, then begins by hooking the rawhide lace through a nylon thread that runs along the inside perimeter. She nimbly builds up a pattern of webbing that always begins and ends with a series of triangular shapes. This intricate weaving technique is a traditional skill passed down through generations of First Nations women. She finishes by wrapping up the heel end of the frame with rawhide, then pulling it tight. Now that the toe piece is finished, she starts weaving the middle piece. Using a larger width of rawhide, she builds up another web of triangles, this time knotting the strips directly onto the frame. Finally, she weaves an opening to leave room for the bindings that hold the snowshoe to your boot. Once the rawhide dries, the webbing will lie taut across the frame. The last step, another coat of varnish to seal and protect both the wood and webbing. And now, these traditional snowshoes are ready to make some tracks.